Hello everyone! Today we will talk about turbos in cars. Firstly, we will compare what will be more powerful – a car with a large volume of an atmospheric engine or an engine with a small volume but with a turbo. Secondly, we will analyze the test results and I will tell you about the structure and principle of operation of the turbo. And I will also explain to you why a turbo needs such a filter and why I do not advise you to use it if you have a regular car without a turbocharged engine. And also we'll see which engine has a higher fuel consumption, turbocharged or with a larger volume. All in order, let's get started. Here are the cars we will be experimenting with. To begin with, let's take one car with a huge 6.5 liter V8 and against it a 3.5 liter V6 with a turbo. Let's see what the difference between them will be and whether it will be significant. Now let's analyze the results. The difference in acceleration to 100 km per hour is 0.7 seconds and the difference in top speed is 15 km per hour. The fact that the turbo increases the engine power so much is impressive, because remember that the difference in engine displacement is as much as 3 liters. Now let's put a 5.7 liter turbocharged engine on another car and see how much difference there will be between it and the 6.5 liter atmospheric engine. Let's see the results. The car with a turbocharged engine is half a second faster in acceleration to 100 km per hour and also has a higher top speed, but we won't be able to find exactly how much higher because the engine gets over torque. Well, such a small drawback. Now let's move on to the fuel consumption test. I set the cars to drive at a constant speed of about 100 km per hour and measure their consumption using a special UI app. And here are the results. A car with a 6.5 liter naturally aspirated engine has a consumption of 12.8 liters per 100 km and a car with 5.7 liter turbocharged engine has a 13.5 liters per 100 km. So as we can see a turbocharged engine needs more fuel. Now let's see how a turbo works and why such a specific filter is often installed on it. Here is the structure of the turbine in the car. There are two blades installed on the two ends of the axis. The lower part of the blades means and rotates the upper part of the blade. It is interesting that it uses the exhaust gases of the car to spin, but the upper part spins from it and sucks air through the filter and under the pressure supplies this air to the engine, thereby increasing its power. That is, everything is very simple. Part of the exhaust gas is fed into the turbine, it spins the lower part and this causes the upper part to spin. The upper part spins, sucks in air and then feeds into the engine. Now let's deal with the filter. Conventional filters look like this, and they are needed in order to prevent various dust and debris in the air from entering the engine along with the air. But the disadvantage of such a filter is that it itself blocks the air to enter the engine and reduces its performance. Therefore, another filter was invented. 
different shape that more efficiently passes the air, but does not pass dirt. This filter must also be impregnated with a special lubricant, but this is also its main drawback. It cannot filter the air properly for a long time. It needs to be changed frequently and is used in racing cars when the car needs maximum power at the moment. And in everyday life it's better to use these filters. They are more durable but still need periodic cleaning and replacement. Take care of your car and it will take care of you. Well, that's all. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the experiment and learned something new for yourself. If so, please like this video, because likes have a very significant impact on the development of the video. You can also subscribe to the channel, because we have a lot of interesting car experiments ahead. Thank you again for watching, and see you soon.